Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christopher Lin. I'm a product manager here at Microsoft on the Microsoft Connected Cache team. And today for a technical takeoff, we're going to be talking about deploying Microsoft Connected Cache for enterprise at scale. So first, to get into our agenda here today, uh, we're going to take a look at what is Connected Cache, how does Connected Cache work, then we'll go through a quick demo of what deploying Connected Cache can look like, and then we'll talk a little bit about troubleshooting some common issues with Connected Cache. So to start with, let's talk about what is Connected Cache. Connected Cache started as a response to a common issue that a lot of our enterprise customers face when updating large fleets of devices. So this is a common scenario. You're an enterprise customer. You have lots of enterprise managed devices at a company site. They're all connected to the same network. And then Patch Tuesday rolls around and there's a big update that needs to go down to all of your enterprise managed devices. All your devices start downloading the update at the same time, which spikes your network bandwidth usage and maybe even crashes it. You have a bunch of parallel downloads that are super slow, even though it's the same exact update to all these different devices. Now, you could alleviate some of this pain by using delivery optimization's peer-to-peer -peer function, which downloads content from other Windows devices on the same network. But some enterprise customers are unable to use peer-to-peer, -peer, or they need a more dedicated solution. So enter connected cache. Here, you can deploy a connected cache node to your network, and you can host it on a VM, on servers, or even desktop hardware. After you deploy your cache node to your network, you can configure your enterprise managed devices to request Microsoft content from your connected cache node. When your cache node receives a request for content, it will download from the CDN once, and then will serve it to any subsequent devices that request it. As a result, your network doesn't crash and your devices update much more quickly. In short, essentially connected cache acts as a transparent software cache that you can configure and manage through Azure. Now let's talk a little bit about how connected cache works. First, we'll walk through the architecture of connected cache and get a good understanding of how everything works. Then we'll address some key topic areas that customers often find interesting, such as how is content delivered securely? How does my cache node stay up to date? And how can I operate connected cache at scale across multiple sites and thousands of Windows devices? So to start, let's walk through how connected cache works at a high level. On screen, you'll see your enterprise network indicated by the red line. Inside your network, you'll have two machines. On the left is your enterprise managed Windows device, which uses the delivery optimization client to request Microsoft content. On the right is the host machine that you want to deploy your connected cache node to. This can be a server or a desktop or a VM running Windows 11, Windows Server 2022, Ubuntu 2204, or Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, 8 or 9. On the next slide here, you can see, first you'll use the Azure Management Portal or Azure CLI to create and configure your cache node. Once you've configured everything, you're ready to deploy your cache node to your host machine. Next, you'll download the OS-specific deployment scripts to your host machine, ensuring that all prerequisites are met. For example, if you're planning to host on a Windows machine, you'll need to install Windows Subsystem for Linux, WSL. After running the deployment script on your host machine, it will install all the necessary components, including the IoT Edge runtime and the connected cache container. Step four, you'll use your device management platform or group policy to set the DO cache host policy that points your enterprise managed Windows device to your cache node when requesting Microsoft content. You can also set a policy that tells the DO client to use DHCP to dynamically discover your cache node. Now, your enterprise managed devices will pull content from the cache server and use P2P for all DO content. Your enterprise managed devices will fall back to CDN download if the cache node is unavailable. You can monitor your cache nodes activity using the Azure management portal, and you can see what content sources your DO clients are using by looking at the Windows Update for Business or Wolf B reports. Two common questions customers often have is, what hardware spec should I have for my cache or host machine? And how many cache nodes should I deploy to my network? It depends on how many enterprise managed devices you want to serve content to. If you're a small, say, branch office with between 50 to 100 devices, then you'll probably want to use hardware that has at least four cores, up to eight gigs of memory with four gigabytes of free memory, 100 gigabytes of free disk space storage, and you'll probably want to deploy one cache node to your network. 
If you're a small to medium enterprise, or maybe you're an autopilot provisioning center handling between 50 to 500 enterprise managed devices, then you'll probably want to deploy onto hardware that uses eight cores, up to 16 gigs of memory with four gigs of free, and at least 500 gigabytes of free disk space storage. You'll also want to deploy at least one cache node. If you're a medium to large enterprise, or say a very large autopilot provisioning center that's handling between 500 to 5,000 devices, then your host machine should have 16 cores, 32 gigs of memory with at least four gigabytes of free memory, and two 200 to 500 gigabyte SSD hard drives for storage. And you'll want to deploy one cache node. If you have more than 5,000 devices to serve, then you'll probably need to consider deploying multiple cache nodes to the same network. Here we see a quick diagram of what it looks like when you deploy connected cache to a Linux host machine. So again, prerequisites for that host machine are it needs to be using either Ubuntu 22.04 or Red Hat Enterprise for Linux 8 or 9 and have at least four gigs of free memory. You can see on the right a quick diagram that shows how Microsoft Connected Cache is deployed to a Linux host machine. So on the outermost box you'll see indicates your Linux host machine that's running one of those Linux distributions. Then you'll have the IoT Edge runtime, the Mobi engine, and within the Mobi engine is the Edge agent container, the Edge hub container, and finally the connected cache container. There are also OS and kernel settings configured on your host machine that optimize your host machine for Microsoft Connected Cache performance. If you're deploying Connected Cache to a Windows host, then the host machine prerequisites are using either Windows 11 or Windows Server 2022. You've enabled nested virtualization and installed Windows Subsystem for Linux, and you have at least four gigabytes of free memory. If you look on the diagram on the right, we can see you have your Windows host machine on the outermost box, you have Windows Subsystem for Linux installed on your Windows host machine. And then using the deployment scripts, a custom Linux image, Ubuntu 22.04, will be deployed to your host machine. Alongside it will be the IoT Edge runtime, the Mobi engine, Edge agent container, Edge hub container, and the connected cache container. There are also custom OS and kernel settings that will be configured on the custom Ubuntu image that optimize your host machine for connected cache performance. Moving on to a frequently asked question from customers, how does connected cache securely deliver content? So like we said before, connected cache nodes act as transparent caches. Any device can connect to a cache node to request Microsoft content. However, the connected cache only downloads Microsoft content from provisioned Microsoft and CDN endpoints. And regardless of the download source, the DO client on each enterprise managed Windows device verifies downloaded content using its metadata hash and verifies its content hash and signature before installing the content onto the device. You can see that today we use HTTP to communicate between the CDN and the Microsoft Connected Cache node, as well as between the Connected Cache node and the Enterprise Managed Windows device. We do have work planned to support HTTPS communication between the CDN, Cache node, and DO client. Another common question we get from customers is, how is Connected Cache software kept up to date? Microsoft silently deploys connected cache updates to your cache nodes based on the update ring setting that you configure for each cache node through the Azure Management Portal or CLI. If you choose to configure your cache node as the fast ring, then it will update soon after the update is released by Microsoft. If you choose to configure your cache node to be part of the slow ring, then your cache node will update within five weeks of update release. If the cache node can't complete update within six hours of starting, you'll see an error message surfaced on the Azure Management Portal. A common question we get from customers is, how can connected cache be operated at scale? Say, if I have multiple sites, or if I have thousands of devices that all need to be served by a connected cache node. Here, we're proud to support Azure CLI, or command line interface for connected cache. Azure CLI is flexible, scalable, and automation ready. You simply need to install the Connected Cache Azure CLI extension, and you'll be able to create, configure, deploy, and delete multiple cache nodes at once. Now we'll move on to a demonstration that shows what end-to-end -end deployment could look like at scale. First, we'll run a PowerShell script that calls the Azure CLI commands to create a new MCC Azure resource and five Windows-hosted cache nodes. Next, 
the deployment script calls the Azure CLI command to configure each cache node. We set the drive configuration and provide the proxy hostname and port number. We can confirm in the Azure Management Portal that the Azure resources were created. Here are the five cache nodes we created. Now we can remotely run a PowerShell script on the Windows host machine to install the Microsoft Connected Cache container. Success. We can confirm on the Azure Management Portal that the Connected Cache node is now reporting healthy. We can also see that the Connected Cache node is successfully egressing data. And next, I've prepared a demonstration of how you can use Intune to deploy the DO cache host configuration policy to your enterprise managed Windows devices to point them towards your connected cache node. Here, we're demonstrating how to deploy the DO cache host policy to your enterprise managed Windows devices to point them towards your connected cache node. First, go to the Microsoft Intune Admin Center. From here, you can navigate to Devices, then to Configuration, and choose to create a new policy. The platform you can select is Windows 10 and later, and you can use templates as your profile type. To make it easy, you can select the delivery optimization template, which will provide all the fields you need. We'll click Create. Then we'll put in a quick name for our policy. Then in configuration settings, these are all relevant to delivery optimization. The one we're looking for is the DO cache host name, which you'll find here. Here you provide the cache server fully qualified domain names or IP addresses of your connected cache nodes. Here I'm using a dummy address for the purposes of the demo, but you can use whatever IP address your host machine has. Next, you'll make sure to add the devices or groups that you want to apply this policy to. You'll configure any applicability rules. And finally, you'll review and create your new policy. Once this policy has been deployed to the relevant enterprise managed Windows devices, they will now request content from your connected cache node. And now we'll talk a little bit about some common issues and how to troubleshoot them. A common issue that customers face is that their connected cache deployment fails on their host machine. A possible root cause of this is strict enterprise firewall rules may block necessary endpoints and prevent connected cache deployment and operation. The solution here is to ensure that your cache node host machine is able to reach all the endpoints listed in our public documentation. Another common issue that customers report is that their Windows hosted connected cache node is unresponsive to their DO client requests. A possible root cause of this is misconfigured port forwarding may be preventing DO requests from reaching the connected cache container on the host machine. The solution here is to ensure that the Windows host OS is forwarding port 80 to the Windows subsystem for Linux distribution that contains the connected cache container. If a customer needs to contact support, there is a script included in the deployment package that will generate a support bundle with detailed diagnostic information. For Windows hosted cache nodes, you can run the collect MCC diagnostics bash script using Windows subsystem for Linux, and then copy the support bundle to the Windows host file system. For Linux hosted cache nodes, you'll run the same collect MCC diagnostics bash script, and then take the support bundle and send it to customer support. If you'd like to learn more about connected cache, please check out the AKA links on the screen. First, we have a link that goes to our public preview launch blog post if you'd like to learn more. Next, we have a link that goes to our public documentation for Connected Cache. And finally, here's a link that you can click if you'd like to go create a Connected Cache Azure resource right now in the Azure Management Portal. And that's it. Thanks for coming to watch our Connected Cache session, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the technical takeoff sessions.